Okay, everyone, I'm here in the north of India, on top of the beautiful foothills of the Himalayas. The Ganga is flowing just next to me. It's incredibly beautiful. And I'm here in the place that's been built by the one and only Raghav, right here. Hi, from... Joshua. Raghav and I, we met online not too long ago. And he was actually in the middle of building this house. And that's mainly what I want to show you today. Yeah, so my brother Ansh and me, we moved to this remote village near Rishikesh to build a hand sculpted house with the help of community. Mm -hmm. So this house that you see has been built by more than 90 people from more than 18 countries, from Brazil to Japan to Europe, US. So everybody put in their labor of love and their healing energies mm -hmm. to build this house. What brought you exactly to move from, uh, from Delhi? Because I mean, this house took a lot of time of yours. You needed to move geographically from one place to another and you are from Delhi. So what brought you changing so much drastically from a place like Delhi that is very chaotic, very city-like, to a place like this in the middle of the mountains and actually having the idea of building a house made directly with resources from the land. Yeah, I think more than anyone you understand that I didn't want to be part of the rat race. Mm. I, I was done working as a conventional architect mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. in a world where everything is fast-paced, mm -hmm. like from fast food, mm -hmm. speed dating, fast deliveries, mm -hmm. we wanted to build something slow and something sacred, which is like true to its being with our own hands. Mm -hmm. And that is why my brother and me decided, you know, like, let's engage with nature, mm -hmm. learn from nature mm -hmm. and build intuitively and not what we learned at the institution. Mm -hmm. So that was the idea behind coming here. So I would say only one thing left to do. Let's go and check it out. Eh? Let's go yeah, and check sure. the place out. This is the entrance of the house. And so basically it's designed as a tiny Damn. house, but it like all the natural materials, zero cement, and most of the materials mm -hmm. have been bought like from within 50 meters. So this is the kitchen, and as you can see, like everything, like even the counters are made yeah. with hands and mud. Look at this, the smoothness of it, though. Yeah, even the cups have been made by my brother Ansh, like wow. with his own hands. And wow. You can see the love that has been put into it. For real, and I love the, the details of everything. This also, we, gonna, we use it to cool down water. So yeah, this is the living room and <laughs> as you know that like we've put in a labor of love like for almost three years apart mm -hmm. from the monsoon breaks. And I'm very shocked to witness the details like the light up there. Who designed it? You designed it? Yeah, so mm -hmm. my brother Ansh and me, we both designed it. Mm -hmm. So we are like both artists and mm -hmm. architect as well. But the whole idea is to tell people like, you know, you don't have to be an architect to design such a space. Mm -hmm. It's just that you have to get in tune with your intuitive sense mm -hmm. and see nature like how nature is. Uh -huh. You don't have like right angles in nature. Uh -huh. yeah, it's yeah. very organic. That's yes. where you find it beautiful. Although there is symmetry, mm -hmm. but it's like an organic symmetry. So we took a lot of inspiration from nature and even the things that you see in the interior, like for example, this light, you got this driftwood from the Ganges below. Wow. And this table is like made out of an old slate that was from an old house in the village. All that you see here, like, is mostly locally sourced. Look at this window, man. Like, let, let me let me just relish the coziness of this window. Here, thinking about life during the winter while having a nice cup of tea. Hey, you already know the deal right now. It reminds me of uh, the project that took place uh, with Shargun at Gilimiti. And uh, you did tell me that you also somehow connected with, uh, with them, with her. What was your experience in uh, Gilimiti? Yeah, I think our journey started at Gilimiti. Okay, so okay. I quit my job, that's mm -hmm. where I went. And like Shagun has been our mentor and our teacher. And it was a very profound experience mm -hmm. meeting like-minded people and mm -hmm. seeing in person, you know, like how yeah. much structures can make you feel and how beautifully you can build. So definitely it has been one of the biggest inspirations. Yeah. For those who don't know, Gilimiti is a project that takes place also in Uttarakhand, in the same state of North India but on the other area. And Shargun is uh, also a bomb when it comes to knowledge, natural building, and the way she explains things and the way she builds and also gather the right people in order to create this marvelous structure that's just mind blowing. So if you have the chance, go and check them out as well, Gilimiti. What I've noticed here is like something going on over there. Come, that's the loft that we have. Look at the stairs though. Wow! So it's like the winter space that you can chill and look at this. A good time in the winter, and you can also see the reciprocal roof from here, like how the reci frame has been made. 
it's also a living roof on the top so that keeps you cool in the summer wow what really shocks me is the beauty of it the details of everything just mind blowing really really it's just mind blowing thank you for real i can see also a little fire spot here yeah that's a rumford fire place okay that's very efficient when it comes to dealing with smoke so there's a hole yeah there's a chimney that goes wow look at that i love the shape of it and once again what really attracts me is even the smoothness of the walls yeah, that's now, a mud lime plaster. Mud lime plaster. Did you also use cow dung or horse dung? Uh, yeah, horse dung or, because cow dung is rare here. They mm -hmm. got a lot of horses. Okay. Uh, and there's also a very important thing right here too, trying to re rely on what is actually local. A lot of time maybe we have something within the natural way of building that might feel more trendy or more nice to be used than others, but sometimes we need to deal with the reality of what is local and what is more available. The result is incredibly beautiful still yeah you can also check out the light coming at different <laughs> yeah, look at that whoa this is the sleeping area Damn. and it's like designed purposefully Chale. in like a cave Chale, this is vibe i'm telling you <laughs> definitely like i can vouch for it you mm -hmm. definitely sleep like a baby you yeah, have dreamless sleeps like you don't know like you know like wow. living in the cities where you dealing with anxiety all day a mud house the sleep quality is all different because of the freshness mm -hmm. and it just you know like wraps you like how a mother's womb actually wraps for you real. you're talking about freshness you can feel it deeply the change of temperature between the outside yeah. and the inside tells our viewers why yeah, is that right now because of climate change mm -hmm. it is unreasonably hot in a place in himalayas like mm -hmm. rishikesh mm -hmm. It's almost like 43 degrees outside, but inside you still feel comfortable and cozy. Very comfortable and cozy. Actually, even uh, in this room where the ceiling is even higher and where there's the reciprocal roof that they left also space for air to run out, you really feel this 10 plus degrees of difference like big time. And also the thickness of the walls really makes a huge difference. And this is the beauty of natural building. A lot of people think that building with mud needs to be not necessarily beautiful it would be a downgrade but look at here okay so here is the washroom Woo -hoo -hoo. So this is all made using tadlac which is a moroccan lime plaster feel it touch it it's very sensual and it's <laughs> water resistant wow and this is the shower area that we have damn man look at that so tadlac is a moroccan plaster so it's you put like lime with lime aggregate or mm -hmm. India is, there's a different technique, a rice where you use slake lime with marble dust. And once you apply layers of plaster, very thin layers, mm -hmm. then you actually burnish it like really hard. And then the next day or like the coming days, you put like soap, olive oil soap, which mm -hmm. has steric acid. Mm -hmm. So basically the calcium carbonate reacts with the steric acid to make calcium stearate, which gives it the water resistant property. Look at that. Wow. Wow. So amazing. So amazing. Incredibly beautiful. A place, a home, and an environment that is uh, incredibly valuable. I also want to show you the outside. Okay, let's go. Let's go. I love the view. Wow. Wow. Man. So you can see the sculptures designed by different volunteers. Like this one was made by Japanese volunteers. So you can see the detail like a turtle on a crocodile. Then there are three eyes here. <laughs> and this basically depicts a mycelium, like the fungus of mushroom. So this okay. shows like the whole cycle because we, have, we get a lot of elephants in this area. So it's like a tribute to the elephant. And so how an elephant poops and the mycelium meets the poop and that's where the mushrooms grow and the magic happens. Wow, the magic of this whole place indeed. When it comes to water, do you have a, a bottle or water that you rely so on? The drinking water comes directly from the spring inside the forest. Fresh, proper. Fresh, yes. And is this the same water they use for shower, for bathing, for Yeah, drinking? but drinking is direct, but for shower, we first run it through the tank. So, so we you storage a lead. Yeah. Okay, okay, for storage purpose. Yes. And electricity wise, you have electricity coming down here? Yeah, the mm -hmm. electricity is here and it's quite cheap and the house doesn't require a lot of electricity. Okay, so yes, we yes. haven't yet put the solar panels. Mm -hmm because it's not been financially feasible. I see. But eventually, yes, you would be moving You might. To... You talked about, lastly, a reciprocal roof and also a living roof, right? Right. So well, it's summer, so it's pretty dry, but yes. after the monsoons, you can see how the living roof is like, I see. you know, alive with life. And 
you know it's all green and that keeps the house cool like in the summers and yes. warm in the winters and i've seen over there a nice tasty oven that actually we used last time we yeah. made some next level pizza how was that pizza last time yeah i think joshua you taught us the best pizza especially your cheese burst technique like is a banger <laughs> a proper banger i'm telling you so this is again a cob wood fired oven oven like hand sculpted mm -hmm. like it can make easily 9 10 inches pizzas and wow. like really delicious pizzas and what we got here so we use it as a rocket stove but more like a barbecue station i see you could also use like a traditional indian tandoor that we have wow to make roti and so on yeah hey challenge this place so grateful to have had the chance to come here to feel this place to see the work itself and you can see also the freshness and the beauty that come out from this amazing amazing structure amazing amazing minds amazing works and hands and i give so much thanks for this also movement that is up growing people realizing how much is important to go back to the roots to go back to natural ways to reconnect to our nature and to work with nature instead of against nature and i hope that more people especially the youth can actually wake up towards this reality and uh, we can actually leave a, a better footprint for the upcoming generation before it's going to be too late and great news for you all like gav is put in his house for you to experience the natural way of living So you can actually find it on Airbnb, right? Yeah, yeah, so it's on Airbnb or you can follow us on Instagram at exactly. Tiny Farm Lab or Tiny Farm Fort. You can find the link in bio for yes. the Airbnb. Yes. I will put I will put the link in bio for the Airbnb also for the Instagram page. So far I give thanks for this sharing that brother Raghav dropped right here. Thank you so much. Drop right so here. Far, Corey, I'm so appreciative to us all that you did, also to us all that you shared. Yeah. It's been another day. has been another blessing you already know what it is another banger <laughs>